we're living in a time that is easier than ever for people like us because essentially what AI does is it tests your ability to ask the right questions. If you can ask the right questions, then you can pretty much at the click of a button get any kind of information that you want. So while I'm stuck using things like actual case studies and discovery calls because I believe it's still the best source is the qualitative stuff that comes from it. You can do like 80% through ChatGPT without even having to leave the desk. It's incredibly powerful when done correctly. So in this video, we're going to be covering how you can find people's deepest desires and use them to build your offer, what it takes to actually win in marketing and business, but also how to get AI to do 90% of the heavy lifting for you. This was an executive workshop we ran within the Growth Partner Accelerator. And if this is something that you're interested in learning more, just go ahead and book a call below. What I'm noticing is that the first stage for you all to make as much money as humanly possible is to get your campaigns printing to the point where even if you are terrible at sales, you can still get closed deals because you just have so many calls, okay? So how do we get you to that point? And it's essentially reverse engineering everything and starting from scratch to show you how you need to be approaching this, whether it's for you, which is the first thing, or how you start getting results for your clients for those of you who are actually doing lead gen for clients, all right? So, the first stage of this is market research. And we've talked about this a lot. You don't realize the importance of the market research and the data and segmenting that in the right way. And then what ends up happening is that when you're sending these cold emails, you're sending an offer, you're making a big claim, you might back up with a case study and you think that that's good enough, but actually it's not relevant. It doesn't really hit the pain points. You just seem like everyone else. So what we want to do is show you how to write cold emails where as Blaze will just, he can share if he wants, we just got a response back saying, I'm not interested, but this is the best cold email I've ever seen where people praise you on your cold emails. That's when you know you're doing something right, even if they don't want to buy it. Now I'm an old fogey, so I don't use AI at the moment, but Blaze and Josiah have been having at it as if their life depended on it. So I'll let them talk about it in a minute, but I'll go to the old fashioned way before we get into that, in terms of how I approach market research and what I'm looking for, and then how you turn that into angles. For me, the biggest things of research have always come from one, speaking directly to the people that actually have the insights, which I know is mad. Who would have thought? But the best way to get insights is by speaking to the people who actually know about what you're asking. And it's about diving deep, because the reality is when you first speak to them, they're not gonna give you the true honest answer, because they've got their guard up. So it's about how deep can you go, just like on a discovery call. You can get very surface level information on a discovery call, or you can go really deep and pull a lot out of people if you know the hooks and the threads to keep putting on. But if you take the first answer as the answer, you're gonna get it wrong. When people are telling you things, they still wanna be perceived in a certain way. So you actually need to dig and press in the wounds that they give you to get the true insights that you can use as angles. Now, if any of you have actually watched the Mastermind video, which if you haven't, enjoy being poor, but for those of you who have, you would have seen that what I did is I asked every single one of them, what were their biggest frustrations before joining as an agency owner? And every single one of those turned into an angle you can use in a campaign. Because what I'm seeing all of you do is overcomplicate what a campaign needs to be. You think it needs to be like five new emails every single time where you're changing every single part. But actually, it can be very minute changes around specific pain points, specific problems, specific outcomes that that person could want. And I know I've shared this before, but the things that I look for when I'm asking these questions, and we'll get into other methods in a minute, is like, what do these people actually truly want? Why do you want the money? Not just about you want the money, why do you want the money? And for a lot of you guys, the people you're selling to want exits, okay? So when they say they want increased revenue, they don't, want, they want the exit fee. So it's, and finding the things that people truly want, but also finding what they don't want. Everyone has the problems, everyone has pain points that they are trying to avoid. So you 
want to pull them in either direction. You want them to avoid the pain, but to have the gain as well. For a lot of the people here targeting agency owners, one of the biggest things they hate is performance-based lead gen agencies because they pay them thousands of pounds or dollars every single month to get leads and calls that don't close. So that's one of the biggest frustrations or the fact they have to spend money on ads or the fact they have to work with dozens of clients. And each one of these then turns into an angle that you can use. You also wanna know what they're afraid of. And a lot of people, they're afraid of looking stupid in front of people, failing, not living up to potential. And again, all of these come from specific angles and pain points you can run in campaigns. And then you're looking for specific language patterns. So once you've spoken to the market, and I literally go and do a discovery call with the clients when they come on board, specifically for marketing. So yeah, they fill out the documents, yes, they fill out the forms, but I go and I actually speak to them and dive deep. And sometimes you don't get it on the first call, sometimes it's gotta be a couple of calls where you really get the insights. But only by doing this do you start having the foundational layer to actually then go and build. The next biggest thing for me is case studies. If your clients have case studies, if you have case studies, actually listen to them back. And that's why we get you to collect case studies in a very, very specific way. Because the first half of the case study is getting you personal insights that you can use without that having to go. And that's where you can get the true insights of how they feel and what they want. And then the external stuff is obviously to make you look good, but the first half of that is so important. That's why we actively collect case studies for our clients. It's a quick win for them, but it also gives you as the marks of the insights and the angles to actually go and create winning campaigns. If any of you run campaigns with and without case studies, you choose with case studies every single time. It makes everything easier. The next thing is discovery calls. So I've been doing a few growth partner calls recently and it's very interesting because you can test things directly on the call and get insights as if it's working or not. And you can ask the exact questions and pain points. So the sales letter I wrote, I've been testing specific parts of that on calls to see if it hits on the call. Now, yes, that's for a sales letter, but it's the same thing goes for every campaign. If you can listen to a call and you can actually tell if you're doing the discovery calls yourself, that's great. You just need to ask the right questions. You know, what made you go on the call? And during that discovery call, you can, again, dig deep. So you can start finding out where they are now, what problems they're doing, what have they tried? What are they trying to move away from? What are they trying to achieve? What's the end goal? How quick are they trying to achieve it? These insights direct from there, direct from the market, especially when you're hearing it from multiple different people, that's when you know you're onto something. And the goal of marketing is to find multiple different parts, multiple different things that align together. Because it's very easy to get mixed messages from watching one case study or, or another. But it's actually when different case studies, different discovery calls, different forums, all the information is aligning at once. That brings on the next point, which is forums. Forums is an interesting one, so, so is group chat and like money, Twitter, all these kind of things. Because what happens is that when people think they're anonymous, they actually give you the insights that you want. But when people, it can be tracked back to them, they're a little bit more hesitant to do it. So when you dive deep into things like Reddit, on specific pain points, there's like an endless trail of insights that you can use and turn into campaigns. It's the same thing. And essentially what you're looking for when you're coming up with angles is specific pain points, specific common themes, specific languages that these people are using over and over again. And then each of those can be pulled and turned into one campaign to be tested to, until you can basically figure out the biggest pain points that people are suffering. We're living in a time that is easier than ever for people like us. Because essentially what AI does is it tests your ability to ask the right questions. If you can ask the right questions, then you can pretty much at the click of a button get any kind of information that you want. So while I'm stuck using things like actual case studies and discovery calls, because I believe it's still the best source is the qualitative stuff that comes from it. You can do like 80% through ChatGPT without even having to leave your desk. It's incredibly powerful when done correctly. Now, I'm gonna shut up for a minute and let Blaze and Josiah tell you all the fun stuff about ChatGPT. But in short, what you need to do is, after choosing your industry, either for yourself or the client, um, and the niche, you want to break it down into sub-niches. So first, let, let's say you already have a client and they sell a product. Let's not focus on the specifics for now. 
Now that product solves specific pain points. So they might think that they work with specific industries, but in a lot of cases, you will be able to work with different industries just because the product solves different pain points and people in different industries can have the same pain point. Your client might not recognize that, but you're the marketer. So it's your job to do that for them. So, okay, so let me pull up chat GPT and I can walk you through how to do it. Okay. So let's say you have a client, you go on their website or you interview them. You don't even need to interview them without speaking to them. I go on their website and here's the list of companies uh, they mentioned they worked with. It doesn't have to be case studies. Sometimes com companies just mention logos. And it's usually when they don't have a case study, but they work to their company or sold something to one of their employees. But that's good enough because you can say that you work with that company. Cool. So the thing we start with is identifying the sub niches of those uh, companies. So I put in all the companies and asked it to name niches for each of the following companies. Cool. In that format. Okay, cool. So we have all of that. Some of them are fairly specific. Um, and some of them are just like, for example, um, insurance, investment management, right? Okay, then you can ask it to turn it into a table and add broader information about the industry. Because if you want to <clears throat> understand how to target them, industry, you won't be able to find niches in a follow like this. Some of them, yeah, you could, uh, maybe more in sales now, but industry is what you have in that follow, right? So you do something like this. And also it lets you see um, more common trends, trends and themes. Because for example, here you have, um, let's see, whatever, however you spell it, hospitality, right? Then you have a similar one, Clayton Hotels here. And then another one. So you can see, okay, hotels are a good one for this company. Okay, cool. Now, this is this is just to get some um, some context, but I asked it to, to give me headquarters location of each of these companies because I wanted to understand, okay, um, are those mostly you know Europe-based companies, UK, maybe US? But it's pretty varied here, right? So there is some Europe, there is some US, some UK. Okay, cool. Now, I know that my client sells something related to customer experience and satisfaction. So I want to find out what job titles would be responsible for that area in those companies. Just because trusting your client won't be good enough. Unless they've worked on cold email and they've sold on a cold email, but the same offer that you're working with right now, you won't have um, good enough information. So now you have another column here for job titles for every company. Cool. And a lot of cases, it'll be the same information. And sometimes you might see that it's giving you very, very um, low level information. So what you want to do is ask it like very, very plainly, just give me more unique insights, give me more advanced info. It's very simple, but it usually works. Or you can just ask it. So I like to think about this as um, like molding clay. So you know how you have those old school tables with like clay and it's like a spinning table and people just sit around this and just mold the thing into whatever they want. So this is kind of that thing, it's just clay. And you can ask it questions and you can just keep going forever. Um, yeah, so it didn't finish here. So I just asked it to continue. Okay, cool. Now I want to understand who's typically a supervisor. So a job title level higher of those people here. Okay. And I want it per industry because sometimes like you have hospitality here. So obviously it'll be a different person than in automotive. Cool. So we have everything here. Now I want to go a level lower because I'm not sure about your clients, but ours sell both B2C and B2B. So we can go to these people and their managers for B2B to sell to the whole department in that company, or we can go directly to everyone in that company as B2C. Cool. So we have all of that. Now, this is getting fun here. As a sixth column, add most common pain points of people with job titles from the fifth column. So the ones that we were initially targeting. Income needs similar to the company in the first column. 
ranking them from the one that contributes to loss of revenue the most. Just because I know that the product from our client indirectly helps um, increase or rather decrease the loss of revenue. Okay, cool. And now you can see specific pain points. Now you can play around with this, with these um, prompts here and get it to give you more specific pain points or even ask it to tell you stories of how it impacts a person who works at this company, at this branch, and how this pain point shows in their life. You can, you can mention those specific pain points and stories in the emails then. So and now this is important because you might think, okay, I'll just contact all the industries, all the job titles here for my client, and that's it. Well, cool, okay. The main pain point of this person, customer experience manager at Mercedes is product quality issues. But now it's Kai is high churn rate, right? Or inefficient complaint handling, which is completely different to what Mercedes has. For example, lengthy wait times for parts or service. So if you're in the market for cars right now, you know it, you need to wait like a year or a few to get a car these days, right? So that's a massive pain point in that industry. But you wouldn't have that at Sky. Okay, cool. So you do it for all of them. And now you can see how many combinations you get because now you can start looking for companies similar to each of these because you can say, oh, we work with your competitor, this one and you're targeting their, um, this company's competitors and target this specific person with this pain point and this one and this one, this one. And each of the times you position the email in a different way, right? And you just continue doing that. Do you see how this no. works, guys? You literally add layer by layer and let each part of this then will translate to a different part of your email. And you can do this at such a scale because of AI and so detailed that your clients don't even know this. So what Blaze has done recently is he's presented this to our clients as research as if we've done it and said, look how great we are, look how much we've done. Just from that, you show forward progression. And this is one of the most important parts. Like, yes, we're gonna help you get results with lead gen, with all of this. And your clients, while they will sign on because they need results, they will stay with you for how you think and the experience you give them. So you need to always be showing that you're one step ahead and leading them rather than them leading you. If they're coming to you, it's already too late. So the results are one part of this, but how you present this, how you show this to them, how you take them from where they are now to there actually matters. I know a lot of people online say, it doesn't matter how you get results, it does matter. These people care, the experience matters. We have a mentor that's doing like 100 million a year and he says the client experience is the thing that separates the good and the excellent. The people who make a million a year and people who make 10 million a year. Because service-based businesses are about people. So it's about winning over the people while getting results, not just getting results. So we're gonna get you all the results first, but it's these little things like showing these kind of documents, showing this kind of research, presenting it to them, jumping on the calls and giving the ideas that's gonna get them to stay and give you more time. Because you guys aren't always gonna find a winning campaign every single time. I know I don't, me and Blaze laugh all the time. This campaign's gonna rip, this is gonna smash it. Yes, it's gonna print and it tanks. And that's like, okay, it's fine, that happens. And you understand that your clients won't always understand but showing them this research showing them the forward momentum showing them how much work you're putting into their business that they're not even thinking about will give them the experience that they need to trust you to keep going sorry blaze interrupt okay. yeah so i can actually after we finish with this i can show you guys the plans that i showed our clients I'll just need a few minutes to, to make sure it's presentable here. But yeah, we can we can show you that. And just one one thing to add to that. The thing that clients care about the most that isn't even results, it's progress. They want to see the things you're doing. They do care about the things that you are giving them. Like client experience is more important than results. Yeah. You will lose clients based on communication. That first hundred days. Yeah. If you are not communicating enough, it doesn't really matter if you've got them tons of results because they will feel like it's out of their control 
And when people don't feel like they're in control, they start to act irrationally. And we've seen it, you know, we've, we've had that where we get in, there's, there's one client who's we've had fantastic results for, but he actually doesn't want to continue purely because he doesn't, like, he doesn't have the control, doesn't feel like it's his thing, feels like we've taken it away. And even though it's a done for you service and that's what they brought into, that doesn't matter. So making them feel a specific way as you're getting results, as you're doing this, will make a massive difference to one, your lifetime value, but also what your customers have to say about you at the end. Okay, so after finding all these pain points for specific people, what you can do now is, there's two, two things. I don't like using ChatGPT to solve my problems. I like to use it to help me break down the problems I already have, and then find little solutions to those little problems. Because if you give it a specific um, problem, like a big one, and ask it to solve it, it won't do it just because it doesn't have all the domain expertise from from tiny little areas of knowledge like Legion. So you can play around in here and get some ideas for for how you can, if you tell it how to structure a cold email, it can start giving you some ideas to how you can phrase things. And the good thing about this is you won't, you, you obviously won't send an email like this, but you can use parts of it in your email. For example, I noticed that you might be struggling with a high churn rate. It's something you could use that as an opener, right? And it just starts giving you ideas. Okay, so now the next part, you need to, because ChatGPT by default, um, at least without the plugins that are coming out soon, doesn't have access to the internet and the knowledge cutoff is at 2021, 20, I think. So if you wanted to, have specific knowledge about like a client or a website, you need to copy um, information from that website. So you can simply just go on that website, copy everything, copy a few blog posts, maybe just a sales page, landing page, whatever it is, and just paste it here. Cool. Now, now it understands the pain points that it found here. It can reason and find the solutions based on your client's product. So because some of those pain points here, your product, your client's product won't be able to solve. And that's okay because you don't need to solve all the pain points. You just need to find one that really resonates. But what this will do is it'll help you uh, figure out which pain points it can actually help you solve. Also, there is something I missed. You can see solutions used in the past. So you know how there is in marketing, you have the old way and the new way. So we use that a lot in our sales text, for example. And what you can do here is just ask it, what, what are the usual solutions to those pain points that they might have um, seen and, and this way you can position your solution against the old solution. It doesn't even have to be a bad solution, that one. It's just different. You position it as a new solution. So, so that's it here. Jacob, if you can take over for a minute, I can find some more examples. I'm gonna let people ask questions because that was a lot. Like okay. Okay. we basically just gave you everything that you need between those few things to research any niche in the world and find exactly the angles, the pain points, the problems that you need to be hitting on for specific job titles, not just industries itself, which by the way, cold email now more than ever is about relevance because the scale like instantly changed things for cold email. And I'm sure there's some other software as well used instantly. Okay. You now have people sending hundreds of thousands of emails every single month to every single decision maker. The consequence of that, is that all of these people that you're targeting see that quick question subject line at least five times a day. Just being generic, just doing the basics isn't enough anymore. What you need to do is start going deeper, just like with any kind of market sophistication. And if you've ever read Breakthrough Advertising, you all know this, okay? As the market becomes more sophisticated, you need to do things differently. You need a unique mechanism. And AI can be that unique mechanism. The insights you're getting can use them what we're testing now is how do you use AI in cold emails to segment and make things more relevant, not just the pain points. How do you take things from specific websites? How do you take case studies? How do you take basically how you use actual AI personalization rather than the stuff that people try and sell you online to mass scale cold emails with relevance. And that's actually the thing that's going to go from you know a sub one percent positive reply rate to two, three, four, five percent now. Back in the day, you could just send basically anything and get like a three, four percent positive reply rate, no problem. Good case study, decent offer. You know, I know people have made millions. We get to take advantage of this stuff 
because we're the first ones testing it at this scale. But what other people are doing is they're trying to give you random prompts to solve all your problems at once. Well, actually, it's more about a layered approach. Just like it is with any kind of market research, you don't get all the insights at once. It's from the discovery calls, it's from the case studies, it's from the forums, it's from the chat GP, and by layering it in. So the same thing applies. You're not gonna get everything all at once in one go. It's a process that you go down and it's a iterative process. So the sales letter that I've written is forever changing. You know, every time we get new insights, every time we find something that's working, we put that in there. And it's the same thing that you need to do your research. As you get more results and you take get more discovery calls in, as you collect more case studies, you'll get new insights that will then go back into the marketing and you'll be able to be even more targeted. Hey, it's over interrupting. And look, I hope you're enjoying it, but I just want to let you know that I actually run retargeting ads to all of the subscribers of this channel where you can get access to a free course on how you can transition your agency into a growth partner business. But again, this is only for people who subscribe. So go ahead, click subscribe and enjoy the rest of the video. But that said, questions before Blaze takes back over. Like if you literally just used what he said, like angles are not like there's no way you cannot come up with angles because someone's coming up with you. I've been using chat GPT even throughout one of the most annoying scripts I've ever wrote. And like still it's like it's literally free money. And what they said as well, especially like we've experienced firsthand what happens when you don't have good client experience and you just get good results. And like even showing them to your clients is crazy. So like Blaze, the blazer, you killed it. It was a good one, mate absolutely sick no i just wanted to say that was unreal see i i actually thought i was using chat gpt right but obviously not uh didn't really so much detail you could go into it i've only joined recently over the last week or so and i was watching the last few calls on the last three thursday calls and it was about like i'm i'm e-commerce specific so i'm going more like skincare supplement brands providing well i haven't really got my offer finalized yet but probably just a question would be have you found like certain ways or angles that have worked for e-commerce than that oh yeah i'll let you take over here it's e-commerce everyone's flipping worse than me isn't it with e-commerce comes about like first is going relevant again we're going back to the basics going relevant in terms of if you're going to more of like beauty brands I, i'm doing one right now for hair care um so that's really cool. and we're doing one as well for just more skincare as well that's ripping at the moment uh in terms of kind of the way i've been thinking about it our clients case studies are kind of legit and what like Jacob said about the case study. Trust me, guys, if you have a good case study, it really like shines more than anything. But let's say you don't have a case study. What we've done right now is essentially, this is a, a thing which tragedy be helped. I was thinking we, we've done a pain point and then we then like done a kind of how our offer fixes that pain point. And then we've done other companies that have used that or used that method to fix it, to keep that relevant with a short call to action. So that's how we have been kind of thinking about like, if I was an e-commerce owners and going for the right type of in the e-commerce, like if you're targeting e-commerce owners, you need to target the right type, like the head of e-commerce, market manager, et cetera, et cetera. Don't be just targeting willy nilly. You need to go for the right like job title. And the bigger you go into the, in terms of like higher brands, like hundred million, 200 million, like the more you have to be specific because like these guys don't play about, they're not going to just see your email. It needs to be relevant to them and help us them fix the problem. And then a short call, short call to action has worked for me. Majority I'm testing like a harder call to action, but that's kind of the main things that I would say about e-commerce. If you don't have a case study, then leverage other brands that are in the relevancy and then always make sure that you understand, like have the good offer. If you can have like a guarantee offer is really good. Pay performance worth for me before. Right now, I've even switched it up and I've got some campaigns working without that. So that's cool. So it is definitely like understanding them. So if you have any discovery calls, go back to them, understand the pain points or take Blazer's free calls on chat GPT and, uh, and, and get yourself acquainted. I think the important thing with the most competitive niches is that you guys only need one client a month for a year to build a multi seven figure business. You don't need to send hundreds of thousands of cold emails. Like, yes, there's a time and a place for that. Like, the instantly guys sending like 100,000 cold emails a month build them a literal 100 million pound business when they exit. But for you guys, you don't need that. You need a few really good businesses that you can partner with and be super successful. So 
don't worry about segmenting down and being more relevant than just trying to go for mass scale. And what Josiah is saying is like, in all of his e-com stuff, the more segmented he's gone down, the more niche within the niche is where he's had the best results time and time again. And if you've watched the other calls, you would have seen that. We've spoken through a few e-com offers like in depth. So it's just about taking what you're doing and if it's like beauty, like, okay, we'll go down one layer further and use the case study for that. Yeah, no, that's great help. Like that, that's something that I have a couple of notes just written from the last few calls. And one that did stand out to me was not just going for the owner of the e-commerce brands. Like that's what I was doing before, like months ago. And it just, I didn't, I could fuck all from it really. Like, and then another thing as well is I actually thought I was niche by going like skincare supplements, but then Nicola kindly showed me that that's not niche at all. It's actually, there's another 10 layers to go. So no, I appreciate that. Thanks very much for that. Steven. What's up, Jacob? Just wanted to ask, like, in terms of the, the chat GPT, because I tried going through this process, but I found it kind of hard for my niche because obviously in like Web3, there's so many overlaps. Um, so I was trying to break Web3 down into sub niches. Um, and there were just so many, like, the niches I came up with within Web3 were like blockchains, wallets, protocols, etc. But there's so many crossovers, like, some of the exchanges have their own wallet, etc. etc. So I just found it very hard to actually like find some concrete sub niches without loads of crossovers yeah so i'll let i will let blaze talk because he is i stay away from chat gpt for the most part sure. I, let, I let him do the, the magic stuff but the way i would look at it is take specific companies and get chat gpt to like basically use that as the sub niche if that makes sense and there will be overlap so what you want to do is probably as you um you want to narrow that down again so once you find something that makes the most sense for you it's about being a little bit more strict and just saying okay well this is where i'm going to operate in and there will be overlap in what you do and what you'll find as you go is you'll collect the insights you'll collect the knowledge on the best niche within the niche if that makes sense so i wouldn't worry yeah. too much about selling them but when it comes to research the way that i would think about it is if you've got case studies or specific companies use that as like the basis and the foundation to work off and I'll let Blaze tell you from a chat GPT point how to do it. Web3, that's a very specific example. I can share my screen. While Jacob was talking, I asked it to break it down into main categories. And you can see, if you know a little bit about Web3, you know that these actually make sense. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there is some companies that will have multiple. Like, there is some, I don't know any, any specific, but there is companies that have NFTs and are a DAO. But then you can start seeing how it, start, how it starts to break it down even more wallets right so you can you can go up this you can just give it this prompt um what you can do now is give me examples example companies or each of these Stephen, do you serve everyone in web3 currently or do you have specific people in there that you're looking at um currently i'm targeting just web3 in general nothing more specific okay. than that. so then what and blaze i'll let you take over in one sec what i'd be looking at doing for example is it's, you can outreach to all of them if you want, but I think you'll have, if you have good case studies, it's like go for as specific to the case study as you can, that you have and the evidence that you have, and you'll be able to get lots more people just by association with the name of the companies that you already have. It's like a, yeah. um, it's a, it's a genuine, I think it's called like the mushroom effect or something, where using the logos, using the brands, gets you more people who recognize that. So I would find those people and then use that to actually go and get your next clients by focusing just on the ones you already have rather than going as broad as the whole of Web3. Yeah, I mean, I do actually, I don't really have a lot of case studies. I have maybe one or two really strong ones, but what I was, I have a very wide variety in terms of the clients I've worked with. So I could probably just about have one client that I've worked with in all 10 of like the sub niches. So I was thinking about having like a campaign for each and referencing a client of mine. Like we help DeFi companies such as, you know, like a client I've worked with because I probably could find a client for each 10 sub niche, but just not like a case study. So what I would do here is two things. First, those case studies that you do have, break down the sub niche that they're in, just, mm -hmm. just figure out what exactly uh, they do. And then what services do you provide 
like just practically. So currently it's, it's just video content, but in the process of expanding that out, but we'll go with that for now. Okay. So, so there is no like physical limits for you to go after any of those sub niches within web three. No, no, not at all. Okay. And why did you choose web three? Um, because I had an agency prior to my current business that was in Web3 and I already had some of my clients in a good network. So Okay, cool. So yeah, so so there is no like physical limits. So I would just go after those case case studies that you have, just figure out what sub niches they're already in. So you can find almost identical companies, like their direct competitors. That's the first thing. And then just don't overthink it. Yeah, like cool. just try to go relevant but don't spend too much time on it i think and then you'll start seeing what sub niches you're getting the most responses from you mm -hmm. should be getting the most responses from direct competitors of your clients because they also mm -hmm. want to get the exact same thing you provided for that client i i reviewed sure. your scripts last week they were good scripts i'm pretty sure i reviewed your scripts at the end of last week me and josiah there was nothing there i wouldn't change the only thing i'd make sure is that as you're targeting out take the characteristics from your current clients, even if they're not like massive case studies, but just the clients themselves. Because if they have a good brand, that is enough to get more people on a call. Like for some of our clients, they don't have case studies with quantifiable results, but they're associated and have with some of the bigger companies. And we just use that to instead of case studies. Josiah, is anything you want to add there? I'd like, um, yeah, I was gonna add, if you can add all of your case studies, if you don't have like ROI case studies, you can listen back to kind of the discovery calls and ask your client, like what problems did I help you solve and why did you actually want to work with me? Get the insights from your clients. Use that as kind of the first line and then say, hey, we helped this company and this company sell this. Mind if I share more info? Really simple. And then you know, as long as you go relevant, that will start sticking and then go via feedback loop. And guys, you understand like your cold email gets better over time. Like the more you do it, the more scripts you write, the more you send, the more annoying clients you have, it's all building your, your, your skill of getting like better cold email. So don't be scared. Like your results today is not going to be your results in like three months. So like start something today. And are you, are you sending any cold emails at the moment? And is it like, cause I don't want to be last time that you do actually have positive replies. And you're just not booked in. What was kind of the situation at the moment? I was printing meetings and like responses up until about a month ago. And I'm talking like 10, 20 positive replies a day. Um, but I, I'm, I'm now getting like barely anything. And I've, I've not really had great response in the last month or so. Um, so I think for me, it was like I, I paused all campaigns just to make sure what? it wasn't a, a deliverability what thing. Did, what did you change? Nothing at all. Which is why, which is why I, I thought it might be deliverability, but... All the domains are fine um so i'm sort of trying to like circle back to it with a, a fresh approach and start from scratch did you change the leads did you change the leads did the leads run out no no so you still mm. got the same batch of leads How yeah you yeah nothing changed was the and, batch. and did the leads have all the same job titles like in the lead batch is the, the same job titles in the same lead batch because what can happen is that you may have done too many job titles right put them in the same leads and then throughout the course of the campaign, you target to the right people. And then you've gone to the stage where you've targeted to the wrong people at the moment or the wrong job titles, maybe the and same companies. Or the wrong companies. The wrong yeah. Have you audited the inbox as well to see the difference between the people that were responding and now not responding? Not really. But what I have done is gone and scraped like 10K new leads. Um, and I'm going to going to try that with like some updated scripts. I would suggest, uh, I would suggest that you spend time doing what we just said so do what josiah said go through the lead list double check and see if there's like a similarity between it while also checking the inbox on who was replying what they were replying to and now what's happening who's replying who is the negatives that's unusual to go from like 10 to 20 a day down to like nothing i mean the only thing is you know like the, the lead lists they haven't run out but the the campaigns are well over 50 percent so it might just be a case that all the first emails have been delivered and now we're on to the follow-ups and like i know with cold email you get the majority of the responses with the first email or second email so it might just be a case of i need to update the leads yeah that can definitely be the case you'll get most yeah. of your like 90 percent of your responses from the and, first and, email and the bump after that and guys yeah. i do want to do want to say right like this is where the real knowledge comes because if i didn't ask him the questions 
he would have gone and done a whole chat GPT course, tried to do market research X, Y, Z. Whereas like us knowing like what the problems that you're going to come is and us digging deeper into his question. And thank you so much, Stephen, for sharing like your problem to show that like, put, like this is just the foundation, but then doing the checks all over again, when things go wrong, that's where the real money is. Like literally that's where the real money is in core email, doing the checks, like asking yourself, why is this wrong when it was working? And I think we had a problem as well with the other guys, but there were again, so many positive replies and they came for me to Jacob about how can you get more positive replies? And then I asked him how many bookies you got? Oh, we didn't get any bookies. Why are you asking for positive advice? Go with these guys. 100% guys, like if things were working and things are not working now, or think you've got positive replies and not booking, like explain to us your actual situation and that's where you're going to get the most value. And the context. Like, yeah, it's like, if you have a conversation with someone, they can't actually give you the correct advice until you truly explain exactly your situation. So their advice to you is going to be wrong because they don't have the context of your situation. Even for you, like the scripts you wrote last week were good. Obviously, the scripts you had before were good. It's just likely that you need to go back to what was working before and just do more of it and be aware that most of your responses are going to come from the start and segment the campaign launches almost. I think because what I did is I, I put like, because I have around 50, 60 domains, I put them all on one campaign and I was sending, I, I think essentially I just burnt through all of the leads really, really quickly, and which is why you, I got all the, the responses you, so quickly. When you did one campaign, did you do any split tests or did you just send one campaign? I have a lot of split tests. Okay. I think I have about six or seven variations for each. How many leads do you send to for a split test? I don't know per split test campaign overall is about 3,000. And have you tracked the calls booked and cash collected back to the split tests? No, I haven't. So this is, okay, this is an important thing for everyone to know is that like what a lot of people do is they're looking at things in isolation. So Stephen, you were looking at it there, it's like, oh, it's like the niche, it's this, this, it's that. But actually like marketing is an end-to-end -end thing right up until the point that they're even on a call. And even then when they buy from you, like the insights and everything you get goes back into it. So when you just look at one part of marketing, you lose, again, the context and the wider vision of actually what's important. And what we've been going through here is how you first start. And we're not actually gonna, get, we're not gonna finish all the content I prepared today. So this is gonna be a multi-part series apparently where I literally break down everything in detail because we're still on section one of about 10 <laughs> from the document we prepared. So that's going to be fun. But essentially, each part of the process, if you look at just that problem, you're probably missing what your actual problem is a lot of the time. So like there, Stephen, you said your problem was the first part. Well, actually, you don't really have a problem, but you think you do. Yeah, sure. Last week, the guys thought their problem was positive responses when the actual problem was converting positive responses into calls. So you need to focus your energy on where the biggest blocker is, where the bottleneck is, and then just smashing through that to get to the next thing. Because there's always going to be problems, but what you'll do is, if this is the journey, you go through each kind of barrier, by the end of it, you're going to have a campaign that's incredibly optimized in printing mediums. And then you take the insights and put that right back at the beginning and the campaign continues to optimize. So what Josiah was saying about like, what you do now is not gonna be the end result. What you do now is the start. And if you think of it in that way, it's very easy to have the confidence just to start because the quicker you start, the quicker you do more, the quicker you win essentially and the quicker you guys make money. And that's what we're all here to do. And there's no shame in that. Anything else on that, Stephen? Or are you good? Um, I'm good, thank you. I appreciate that really, really helps and gives me a lot more clarity. So, so well, done, well done on the win earlier. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good stuff. Alessandro, go ahead. I just have a question about, uh, so I just got an email right now that just said my, uh, one of my domains has been suspended for spam. What, what do you think was the, the reason for that? Or is there any ways to kind of like, like, I mean, is like I was checking my deliverability with Glock apps and I was trying to figure out why uh, some of my domains, it looked like the, the domains that I had treat, like the subdomains that I created were all kind of uh, 
not as deliverable as the other uh, as the other domains. And I don't know if that was a common trajectory that you're seeing, or I'm not sure. Send over all the details in the technical channel, and we can look at it because there's a lot of context that we need. Yeah, I think technical things like that. There's like there's so many different factors that go into deliverability. So yeah. it's actually easier to do it in a channel like that than run through it specifically here. But send it in, and we'll, we'll look at it. Okay. Yeah, I just had a quick question about kind of the most cost effective way to go from a search in Apollo. Um, like I have a search in Apollo with about 6k of my ideal client. And I'm wondering what the most cost effective way to then export all those and um, thinking about using Scrubby to just preparing it for first campaign in the best possible way. So one second. So Luke, do you want to just export? leads from Apollo first or yeah i guess i'm process? thinking kind of the whole process from yeah okay having a search in apollo so, to sending a campaign so you can use the link i sent in the comments and it's it's nick abraham software so they basically just set up well they just set up apollo in the cloud and they scrape it for you and deliver it within like 15 minutes and it's cheaper than the actual apollo subscription so once okay. you get that back in the csv you can buy a million verifier it's fairly cheap. You put all those leads in the million verifier, you'll get back around 30 to 40% valid back. Now, the ones that are catch all or unknown, you put into Scrubby and 70% okay. of those you'll get back as valid. Awesome. And so for what you just sent me, um, do you actually need an Apollo subscription to use that yeah. then? No. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Blaze. That really helps. So I think obviously we've done pretty well. I like market research, but I think there's a, the, there's another component to that, which is before the data segmentation, but it's like, how do you actually talk about USPs and unique mechanisms and unique processes and how do you pull that out of client? What I'm seeing at the moment is that the market has gone and become so saturated and so sophisticated that it's used to all the claims and it just understand, like people know what you're trying to do when you're selling to them. So back in the day with Breakthrough Advertising, a unique mechanism was what it was called and you'd add that and that's how you get this new fresh claim. But now what I'm seeing is that a USP unique mechanism, like it's people have heard it all before, you know? So it's how do you build a unique process that takes people from A to B? And it's that such a high level of sophistication that it's the actual full process and not just the mechanism. Now for you guys as growth partners, that's the pillars of your offer. So breaking that down and it's why you go from A to Z through the pillars is so important because you, especially as service providers have to go through all the shit that people have dealt with in the past. Because so many businesses have been burned by terrible agencies and young kids who have no idea what they're doing and don't have to get results. So this builds a lot of trust and also gives them clarity as to why they should be working with you and why this will be successful. That said, when it comes to your clients, you still need to have something that you can use as their USP. You can use as that process, you can use as that unique mechanism. So you need to really understand how you actually find that to use in your campaigns. So the way that I look uh, approach this Again, by the way, you guys are actually gonna to have to speak to your clients for this, I'm sorry, but it's the best way to get it out of them, is to really dig in deep as to how they solve X pain point, okay? And you're, you should know those pain points. Your clients should also know them since they do business and they do, should solve some sort of problems, you'd hope. And you need to get them to tell you the process that they take to solve any given problem that the market is suffering. And you can get them to go through multiple different pain points. Now, a lot of the time what you'll find is that your clients genuinely don't have a clear answer in their own head. Like a lot of the time they, they actually don't know themselves how they help people, which is crazy. You would think that they do, but they don't even know their own USP. They can give you a bunch of different answers. And what you need to do is really pick apart that and what they give you. Again, it's almost like a discovery tool. You're trying to understand what they're saying and pick on certain points and pull on the thread to really unravel that 
to truly understand it. At the same time, if you can understand what competitors are doing in the space and you can show them the old way, the way that competitors are doing, the way they've done before, and the new way by showing them what we're gonna do and by understanding the process that people are gonna go through, you can start, again, pulling people in two directions and create an increased amount of desire to take action on what you're saying. Because they wanna move away from the pain that they've got now. So as you break this down, you will see a few different areas where there's something unique about them. You really want to pick apart the few ones, the one, two, three core elements of that that are the most important and dive deeper into that and get them to really explain those parts. Typically, you know, three to five parts is going to be more than enough and you can use this as additional angles in your campaigns. You know, you all know the headline, how to go from X to Y in time frame using unique mechanism. So you can start testing these in the market as well. And as you have those kind of components mapped out and you're diving deep, you should be able to pick out unique insights from those elements. This also can then map later down the line into the, the sales letter for your client. But this is something that if you don't do this, you will find it much harder to get prospects to buy because they don't understand why they should buy from you. Like it actually doesn't make sense to them. So yes, we need to research the market, but we also need to research the customer and the people that we're actually helping. Once you kind of understand that, you really need to know what they've done in the past. And this goes back to the same thing. You know, why haven't they done this before? What do they hate? What have they tried? If you can align the new process, the new way of doing things with all the things these guys have tried before, it becomes very easy to build a unique mechanism and a unique process. No questions, but we already pay a lot, but you guys need to start charging more for this shit, man. <laughs> That's a good answer. Anyone else? Anyone else confused on how that applies to them and what they need to do? No? Wow. I thought that would confuse more people than it did. What, what a pull. Imagine this. We haven't even gone through all the points yet. Guys, oh that, was, that was two out of over 10 points that we want to go through. I wanted to get into data segmentation but I think Blaze has just left, or is he still here hiding in the background like he normally does? No, I'm still here. Okay. Well, then we'll get into data segmentation and then we'll call it a wrap for there. So some of you wrote about like how you do scripts, which means I'm going to open loop you here. I mean, you're going to have to turn up next week to figure out how we're going to write banging scripts and how we optimize, how we find the angle, when we should kill them, when you need to, how you analyze them, how you basically manage a campaign. And Jordan, for you, what I'll do as well is I'll talk about how I applied that to apps too. So that means you all have to turn up next week, otherwise you're gonna miss out on everything and you guys wanna make more money, don't you? So that's not gonna happen. Cool. Um, so data segmentation, this is, a, I think, a nice finishing piece, so to speak, of what we've talked about. Because at this point, you understand the market, you understand the pain points, you understand who you're targeting. You also understand what makes your customers different? What makes you different? And hopefully you can control their offer and help them with the offer itself. But the last kind of part of this is before we get into actually kind of writing emails, is who do you actually target in terms of the data and how do you make it so specific that when you're sending out campaigns, there's so much relevancy. Now, Blaze just gave away half of it for free by going through it. And as you can see, like, if you go back to what Blaze had there, it tells you the job titles, it tells you the industries. So all you have to do is then go scrape this from there and make specific campaigns around that. But I think this applies to so many of you because what I see is that a lot of you are going super broad rather than spending the energy up front to actually get a super targeted list. And when you do that, and again, this used to work, it used to be very easy. You could just scrape every CEO in a country and just full send cold emails and make tons of money. And I'm sure there's some offers that you could do that. It would be fun. But ultimately, with where the market is going and with where cold email is going, the more segmented you can be up front, the more time you save, but also the better results you're gonna get on the back end. So what we've started doing is going from like industries and job titles and start going super niche with specific 
pain points relevant to that. And again, I'll let Blaze take over here and tell you how he does all of this with ChatGPT so you guys don't have to do any of the work yourselves. I can actually show you emails and the plan because I prepared this plan. So this is a little bonus that's outside of what Jacob said, but this is one of the plans that I created and, and me and Kate presented to one of our clients. They do like 50 million a year um, and they were extremely happy about this and very helpful for, for the campaigns. So what we do first is we think about their product, what they sell and the industries that they can potentially target. So once we do that, we have, okay, so we have industries, cool. So we have logistics and transport, care, property, uh, public services. So this is very broad, uh, but this is, it just en encompasses everything um, and business services. So we only gave them one example because there would be tons of combinations here. So logistics and transport. So what I did was I asked ChatGPT to break it down into sub niches. Boom, that's it. Do you guys see the difference in going from like an industry and why we say like B2B SaaS and e -com and beauty is not just a niche? Logistics and transport was just broken down into like 30 different sub niches. So when you're just targeting all of them, you're going to hit completely irrelevant offers to some of these guys. So if you can use this and adapt the scripts to specific parts, and yes, not all of them are going to be completely relevant, which is where I just cut blaze off very rudely. You're going to be able to get the three, four, five percent positive response rates that you used to get just by being slightly more targeted and spending maybe an extra hour up front. Yeah. So you want to understand that these make sense. So what I would do is I would ask it to give me descriptions, especially if it's an industry you have no knowledge about, for example, logistics. And um, I started reading these and one of them is cold chain logistics. So I had no idea what that was, but it's just companies that transport frozen goods. And when you think about it, okay, well, yeah, there is some companies that do that specifically, or it's their focus, or it's one of the services they do. But when you think about it, how many specific pain points that there are in cold chain logistics, like just transporting frozen goods causes so many issues. And now when you think about these, it's like, I don't know, 30 of them here. Each of them will have different pain points related to different things. Now, obviously you want to target your offer will only be related to some of those pain points, but still the way they will show and those sub niches will be different. So we broke down those industries into sub niches. Then we looked for all the job titles that this could be relevant to. So sometimes you might be fixated on just one job or you might go much broader. For example, you sell something and you think, okay, let's go to the CEOs, founders and owners. Well, no, especially if you work with clients and bigger clients, this doesn't make sense. So with this client, they target only companies in England with 500 plus employees. So when you think about that company with 500 plus employees, you're not going to speak to the CEO. Owner will likely not be the CEO anymore, um, not even be related to the company. It could be sold multiple times. So the owner is a completely different person. Just to remind you of the reality here. So we break down the job titles. And when you think about these, for example, all of these are different levels and they will have different responsibilities, um, different number of years of experience. You can Google how many on average HR directors in England uh, need of experience. So it's normally like yeah. at least seven, uh, 11 years, sorry, to get to HR director. This is what happens when you work with just one niche. You become Jacob like this. Okay, so so we break down, we have HR, learning and development. We, we thought, okay, let's test ops because they're also related to those pain points or rather solution that solves those pain points. Heads of departments, um, directors, senior directors, and the managing director. Okay, cool. So what happens now is you would need to cross every one of those job titles with every sub niche, right? So HR directors add freight forwarding, then third party logistics, then the fourth party logistics, and so on. Obviously, some of those will be tiny. Obviously, it depends on your, on your targeting in terms of company size and location. In this case, some of those, we only have like 50 leads for these 200, maybe, but the way, the way it works is if you have a good offer, you will get those on a call and you will have a much higher likelihood of being able to close them. And if you get percentage from your clients and your clients charge a hundred grand, 500, that's some nice money. So we broke down the groups. So you can see here that we say human resources and logistics, just because if we started breaking it down into every combination, it would just get crazy because it gets into hundreds here. So we just go broad uh, for a second and then we break down pain points for specific sub niches.
right? So road freight transportation, for example. Cool. Then we looked for some data just to um, back it up in front of the clients. You don't need it. It will be useful sometimes to get some angle ideas. For example, in here, it says that companies that invested in training and development had higher profit margins. Cool. Okay. So you can lead with that in the email. And here are some sample emails. So here's the topic of the email, the idea. So we want to hit driver shortages at road freight transportation companies. I first thing, are you guys struggling to keep your drivers? The reason I'm asking is because we help company type sector, and in this case, road freight transportation companies, retain more drivers and increase profit margins by upskilling your HR team. Worth exploring? So you can see just how much more relevant this gets. And the language you use here is very different. So you don't, you don't say, are you guys struggling to retain your talent? You say, keep your drivers. It's very different. Now, um, this is very simple. You just say like what you help with, you tie it into the pain point of that specific company and the job that you're contacting. You can mention the method. In this case, it's just very simple. So I just mentioned it briefly. And then your call to action. This can do a lot of damage because this is very, very simple. And it's just a soft call to action looking for interest. But if you have some education pieces that you can add in here, um, like white papers, case studies, this gets much more powerful, especially case studies of companies similar to this one. So if you have a, if you have a case study, if you're a client or you have a case study with a company, you, you find out what's the sub niche of that company, who are the direct competitors, and then you'll get most of them to reply to something like that. I'll go through one more example here. So the idea is the driver safety at road freight transportation and fleet management companies. We help companies with fleets of at least 60 drivers develop better safety policies and training programs, ultimately reducing accidents and improving driver safety by upskilling your HR team. Is this something of interest? Now, remember, this is still the same product. It's the same offer, right? We didn't do anything. We didn't talk to the client about, oh, can we change anything? What can I do here? We're just repositioning the product or the offer. We're not even really talking about the product. This is like, this is the only part of the product that's mentioned. And this one also, this is fake. It, it doesn't come from the client. It's just, it's just like um, qualification that they don't need to meet, but because people will feel left out if they're below that, they will ask if they, if they qualify. And then anyone above that will feel like it's towards them. So this works very well. You can do something like that in the PS here as well, right? So yeah, Jacob, do you think we can send this over to the guys? Do you guys see the difference in like what most people are doing and then what you need to do if you want to be the best? If you guys want to make five grand, go sit on a beach in Thailand, how about it? If you guys want to make millions, like this is the level we want to go. Do you see how that applies to the segmentation, how you can use that and what you're doing to go deeper? Because a lot of you are just doing surface level because it's easier. This is harder, like Blaze, you spend ages working on this, but that depends how deep you go, will decide how much money you make. It's only everything. If you wanna make more money, do more. Luke, go ahead. Have you tested using these as like educational content that you send to the client in between calls or preparing? Like, is that is this a good way to potentially provide a ton of value up front before you even get on the call with them? Yeah, you definitely could. If you get enough insights from the discovery call to start doing it, you could put some of this in the custom proposal for sure, definitely. Paddy? So you you mentioned in one of them called the emails about, I think it was 60 drivers or 60 employees for, I don't know who could answer this, but for like the e-com sort of situation, um, I know we keep going back to it, but would you mention their revenue? So like we do this for companies with XYZ yeah. monthly revenue, or would you say revenue and employee count? What's your offer, sorry, Paddy? Well, that's what I'm sort of building right now. But that's mostly like I do uh, fuck a, a lot of things, but mostly like Shopify builds, funnels, conversion okay. optimization, that so sort of thing. With X amount of traffic. So that's one. Would you say sorry, base? Revenue is a good one as well. Yeah. Especially if you know average margins in that industry, because it'll actually be useful for you. It's not just a random number. Those drivers, that was kind of random, but it, it would also show interest. If they have 60 drivers, it could be a big problem. So in your case, if you know that the profit margins are, you know, 20% and the client makes $100,000 per month in revenue or pounds or whatever, you know that they probably can't pay you 10K per month because yeah. it'll it'll bring bring them down to, to 10%, half of the yeah. money they make. 
heard yeah. phrase, phrases as well, Paddy, is it, when they get on a call, if they ask you, I can look at a store, go in, and I want to work with people where I can see a few things that if we pull on, it's going to make massive growth. So when you're telling things like specific revenue and you're saying something like that, and you can say, okay, well, if I can tell you a conversion rate from 5% to 10%, I'm not just going to make you a couple of grand, I'm going to make you a couple of million. And that's yeah, how you yeah. can start increasing the value of what you're offering so you're being priced on value and not on what you do and the services you provide, which is the most important thing for all of you is to be paid based on value. Cool. Guys, thank you. <laughs> any other questions? A quick one. Um, sorry, I couldn't find the raise hand button. Kind of in the, the same space as uh, Paddy, but focusing a little bit more on sports tech. I kind of want to trial a few different sub niches. So for example, what we we looked at today and you're using ChatGPT to dive deeper into those. Do you think it's kind of smart to, you know, split the kind of campaigns with these sub niches, having different cold emails to see what's hitting better? You split the, the case studies and experience you have down the sub niches, then use specific campaigns to those sub niches using the most relevant offer and case study if you have it and mm. that will basically tell you where where you, firstly you get the most success very, very quickly and the easiest place for you to make money and then just focus on that sweet just mm -hmm. on that as well would you separate campaigns into per job title for that sort of thing as well so like you could go even further into like sub niches per case per case study then campaigns focusing on sub niches and job title does that make any sense you can do for big big prospects i would because in the decision maker is going to be different so what blaze is showing you there when he broke it down into sub niche he then broke it down into what job titles the higher and lower ones so when we're going and hitting you know blue chip companies it makes total sense if you guys aren't selling to that there may not be that many job titles to segment it by but it makes sense and again it's to demo. It's very important that you map the wording with the context of who you're speaking to. So if you're speaking to a director versus a low level employee, what they want is very, very different. Makes sense. It doesn't doesn't happen just in blue chip companies. If you've spoken to Jordan and now you've spoken to me, you can see the difference, right? And I can tell you there's a massive difference is much bigger than just the way we speak here in terms of what we focus on and the way we think. And our priorities depends on because in smaller companies you're not you may not have as many decision makers that's that's the only reason i say that small companies but blaze you are correct anything else guys oh good then that was a good call blaze thank you for coming on yeah. we're going to share the recording this is going to be part one of a multi-part series by the looks of it how long it took so next week make sure you're here as well because what we're going to do is we're going to start breaking down how you take everything we've learned here today and turn them into campaigns and how you make sure that you're testing the right things in the campaigns rather than just testing everything and not having true data on what's working and what's not, which is what most people are doing. So what we want to do is simplify the whole process, even though Blaze just blew all your brains with ChatGPT, I know, but we will simplify the rest of it, I promise. Good stuff, guys. Appreciate it. See you soon. Bye. Yeah, bye. If you like this video and you want to know more about the way I approach marketing and how we're booking over 200 calls a month, go ahead and click the video now and I'm going to take you through to an 87 minute masterclass I recorded for our mastermind students who all pay us over $30,000 a year on exactly the strategies that we are using right now to book 100 to 200 calls every single month.